I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do, believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. Hello, everyone. And welcome to the Covenant Living Broadcast again this week. Glory to God. I'm David Weeder, and we are going to have a word of prayer and get right into the Word because we've got a lot to cover. Don't forget your Bible and notebook now because you're going to need it. Father, I thank you for this yet another opportunity to share your Word, to teach. Glory to God. And I'm asking you as a psalmist of old to make my tongue as the pen of a ready writer and that the people hear accurately and receive exactly what they need from the Holy Spirit today. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory and honor and praise and thank you for it, sir. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get to this because we've got a marathon session coming up. Are you ready? Let's turn over to Mark chapter 11. That's one of my favorite scriptures. Mark 11. Now, remember where we left off last week. We talked about words. Word-dominated, word-controlled system that we live in. And now we're looking at it from the perspective, from the side of the mountain, if you will, of speaking in tongues. Holy Spirit words. Now, keep that in mind all during this broadcast and look at Mark chapter 11 and verse 22. And Jesus answering with the answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Glory to God. For verily I say unto you that whatsoever, uh, excuse me, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says as long as he says it in English. Oh, wait, no, that doesn't say that, does it? No, now, now we've got this entering in. Whatsoever he says, whatsoever he says. Doesn't say it has to be in English. It can be divine secrets to his Father in heavenly language of tongues. Glory to God. Now, go right directly over to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, and I want to look at verse 19. <clears throat> but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak, for it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. That's the only way you can take no thought about what you're going to say is let the Spirit speak and you just repeat what He says. But notice, it says, take no thought how or what you shall speak. Now, we dealt with that a couple broadcasts ago when we talked about Jesus crying with a loud voice and then exactly what He said. So, how can not only be, is it loud, is it soft, is it whispering, is it forceful, or is it in tongues, or what he shall speak. It may be heavenly language, the tongues of men and angels, as Paul talked about in Corinthians. Now, I know we're going quick. You're going to have to go back and study this out. But, I mean, it's right there in, in, in red words. All right? Now, go over to Romans chapter 8. We've looked at this scripture before. Romans 8, and we're going to go, you got it right down there to verse 26. And we're going to draw your attention to something a little bit different even this time than the last couple times we looked at it. Verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also 
helpeth or takes hold together with us against our infirmities, for we know not what we shall pray for uh, uh, for as we ought, let me back up, I got all excited. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints, that be me and you, According to the will of God, tuck that one aside, we're going to come right back to it. According to the will of God, and we know that all things, and, and, and is a connector. It connects what we just read to what's coming up. We're talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit through intercession and groanings, tongues, and we know that all things work together for good to them who are called according to the purpose and love God. And it's through the intercession of the Holy Spirit taking hold together with us against our infirmities. For He knows the perfect will of God. Now, keep that in your thinking and, and think about how Jesus told to pray. Mm -hmm. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's how you pay, pray the perfect will of God because the Holy Ghost is the one that knows it. So pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues, and pray the perfect will of God for your life on this earth. Glory to God. Did you get a hold of that? When you pray in the Spirit, you are praying God's perfect will according to Romans chapter 8. Be done. You're praying it out. Those divine secrets. You don't know. Your mind doesn't know what the perfect will of God is for your life, but the Spirit Himself does. And you're talking those secrets to the Father and praying that you might interpret that your mind be fruitful. Then you know the perfect will of God for your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm stirred up over this. Hallelujah. Now notice, he knows what to pray when we don't. He engages personally on our behalf. And then all things work together for our good. Isn't that an awesome system? I told you, I tell you at the end of every broadcast, God is for you, never against you. And he set this deal up and stacked it in your favor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praying those divine secrets according to 1 Corinthians 14, 2. The perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Now, go over to James chapter 5. I've got to pull out my, my amplified sword here. James chapter 5. Come on, sword. Here we go. James chapter 5. Amplified Amplified Classic Edition, and we're going to read verse 16. Now keep this in mind. Yeah, you're praying, but we're praying, we're talking about praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. All right, get this. The last part of, of verse 16. The earnest, heartfelt, Continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Well, if you're praying in the Holy Ghost, you're praying in the language of the Spirit of power Himself. No, matter, no wonder it makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let's go over to Ephesians Chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, and we are about to see the answer to a question that we introduced a couple broadcasts ago. Ephesians chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 16, first of all, and then we're going to look at verse 20 that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory 
to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man, in the spirit, in the spirit man, the insides. Now, verse 20, now unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, strengthened in the inner man by His Spirit, the Spirit of power, He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, and that is the greater works that Jesus talked about, and this is how we do them. Praying in the Spirit, the gateway to the supernatural glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to put this all together. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm fired up and I want to go fast and I want to slow down and I want to run around and... Okay. <sighs> Calm down. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. As you can tell, we're covering a tremendous amount of Scripture. You really are going to have to go back to get this whole thing. We're going to start in verse 1, and we're going to read down through here, paying attention to the Spirit of God. And I, brethren, when... This is Paul talking here. You know, you remember him, the guy that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament? And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, glory to God, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, in the Spirit. Howbeit we speak wisdom, who got wisdom and revelation among them that are mature. So these are, we're talking about mature believers. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that came to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Sound, sound familiar? You're talking to the Father, mysteries and secrets. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love Him. Don't stop there. But God has revealed them to us. How did He do it? By His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. We just read that in Romans 8. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. This puts it all together. You've got wisdom, revelation, power, all of it should be evident in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, as Paul said. Glory to God. This is how you do it. The greater works in the life of the believer. So finally, we put it all together. Now, we've got, there's examples all through the book of Acts uh, let, for, just for example, let me just go one over uh, Acts chapter 16. Uh, there's several examples. As a matter of fact, make a note. Look up and read Acts chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, and you'll see the combination of the right words and the right action developing the desired end results. But this one I want to look at because everyone's really familiar with this one. Acts chapter 16, and we're... 
I'm going to look at verse 25. And this is where uh, Paul and Silas were in the prison. And verse 25 says, At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. All right, now we know the, we know the rest of the story. <laughs> Massive deliverance took place. But here's what I want to get to. Why didn't Paul just stand up and issue the faith command and, and tell the angel? I mean, he, told, he said in Hebrews, he's the one that said all the angels are sent forth to minister for us. Why didn't he stand up and issue the faith command to the angels to get deliverance? Why did he sing? He sang. He and Silas sang. And they didn't sing quietly. The prisoners heard him, so they sang loud. Now we're seeing. How should he have done it? and what he should have done. Those combinations by the Spirit produced power in his life and produced the desired end result. So this is an example. You can trace this all through the, the Bible. Make a note. Go over to, to Acts chapter 9 and verse 40. Acts chapter 9 and verse 40. And look at that. It says prayed. Do you think it could have been in the Holy Spirit? Could have been. Glory to God. Because it, it produced the desired end result. This is the examples of how this is all put together. All put together. Glory to God. If you see it, go back to week one. And now, knowing what you know now, start at week one and watch all the broadcasts again. All right, now, I want to give you a couple examples from my own personal life. Now, one of these took place almost 30 years ago when my wife and I were first married. For, now, you know, I, I grew up around the ministry, but there was a time period there where I tried to get away from it, and it just it didn't work. As you can tell, it didn't work. But anyway, I thought I was going to give it a shot. But... Even at that, in that time frame, the Lord would, you know, we'd, we'd kind of get back into it and then we'd try to run and then we'd get back into it. Well, my wife got so, so, so sick. And I mean, it was, it, she, was she was vomiting and, and the, the, the odor was like sulfur. I mean, it just, and she was, she had gotten to the point where she was completely delirious. She was just, just almost passed out on the floor. And all of a sudden, inside me, I heard Psalm 23. I didn't know why I was supposed to say Psalm 23, but I just leaned forward and I whispered in Lynn's ear the first verse The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, Within a matter of five minutes, it was like nothing ever happened. And she told me later, she said, I heard somewhere off in the distance the first verse of Psalm 23. And when I heard that, inside my spirit, the whole rest of that psalm exploded. It was the only thing I could think about. It was the only thing I could see. It was the only thing I could hear. It just absolutely exploded. And the next thing I knew, I'm perfectly fine. Well, what did Psalm 23 have to do with that sickness and, and getting her delivered from it? I don't know. I don't have a clue even to this day. But it worked. And he gave me the words, and he gave me how to say the words. And it produced the desired end result that we needed it desperately at that time. And then one other one that just happened a few years ago. Um, well, no. No, I'm not going to shoot that. No, the Lord just checked me on that one. It's a similar, it's a similar type situation, but it involved the, the wisdom of God. And, um, and I'm going to deal with that at, at a different time. I'm not going to deal with that this time. But the how and the what will always produce the desired end results if it's the Holy Spirit's how and the Holy Spirit's what. Get a hold of that. Now, I want to answer some, some questions real quick that people have. And these are common questions. I travel all the time, all over the world, and you hear these things. Who is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for? 
what are the qualifications to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Did the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of speaking with other tongues, pass away with the apostles? We need to settle those questions once and forever, and the only way to do it is in Scripture. Go to Luke chapter 11. Luke 11. And verse 9. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil or carnal, natural, know how to give good gifts, gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the gift of the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? So notice, one, it's a son or it's a child. You have to be born again. That's the requirement. Number two, you have to ask. You have to ask the Father for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for Him on you. And then go to, Luke, to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, and I want to point out in, uh, let's see, Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Uh, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens will I pour out my spirit in those pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now he is talking to the mass of people standing out there in front of him, and he's talking about their sons and their daughters. Now, so it's not just the apostles. It's not just special people anymore. It's everyone. We already saw in, in, in John where Jesus was talking about whosoever and any man, talking about the wells and the rivers, glory to God. Now, go over to Galatians chapter 3. No, actually, we're right there in Acts 2. Just go to the end of the chapter. Acts chapter 2. No, 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 come on. There we go. Acts chapter 2, and look at verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be thee baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, for the remission of sins, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, I want to point this out to you, and we'll let this settle the discussion. Okay, he's talking to a people that are contemporaries with him, and he said, to your children, to your seed. So it's obviously past them, age-wise, time-wise, beyond the apostles. But then he also says, and to all those who are afar off. And if you look that up, it has a dual meaning in the Greek. It means afar off in distance, and it means afar off in time. So it covers both time and distance. And we're going to let that settle the issue, even though you can look up more in Galatians chapter 3. Where you can see who the promise is to, anybody that's in Christ. Glory to God. Peter is preaching to the masses. He's not preaching to the apostles. For it, so it is for everyone. Now, one other thing I want to deal with. Who is actually doing the praying when you are praying in tongues? Again, this is in... Acts chapter 2 still, you can find the answer for this. Verse 4, they were all filled 
they, they is the subject, were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. So they're doing the speaking. You hear that a lot. Well, you know, I'll speak when the Holy Ghost speaks through me. He's not going to make you speak. You have to speak. You have to give voice. And the Holy Spirit just gives you the utterance, gives you the words. Okay? All right. Now we got that settled. Who's actually doing the praying? That would be you. That would be me. The ministry of the Holy Spirit through the baptism with the evidence of speaking with other tongues must be received by faith. Galatians chapter 3. This is the big one. It has to be relieved, re, uh, received by faith. We saw that it was for every man, but it must be received by faith. Galatians chapter 3, verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Received you the Spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith. And then in verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that you might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, Jesus said in Luke 11, you have to ask for it, you have to be a son, and you have to receive it by faith. So, are you ready? Glory to God. Now remember, you're doing the talking. Are you born again? If not, just say this, Father, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. You died for my sins, and God raised you from the dead. I receive you as my Lord. Now you're born again. It's that easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus, but it's that easy for us. Now, let's, let's be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Just say this after me. Father, your word says if I ask you for the Holy Spirit that you'll give me. And I don't have to be concerned about getting something wrong or, or, or getting a devil or something because you said you, a father wouldn't give a, a, a serpent or, or a scorpion. But you give the free gift of the Holy Spirit. So I'm asking, I receive it in faith. I believe that you're a man of your word and you said if I ask you give. So I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And just like a baby learning a language, I'm just going to make a noise here. And I'm just going to let my, my, my tongue do what, what, whatever I hear, whatever, I, whatever I, I think. Deep breath in and let it out. And make a noise. Oh, isn't it wonderful? You just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't be concerned about, about making lots of complicated noises. You're a babe in this. Those of you that are parents, were you upset when your baby just started You couldn't understand them, but that's okay. They developed, they grew, they learned, and so will you. Even when, even, even when you get a year, a year old or two years old or whatever. I remember Ryan, my son, he used to say, you know, he had three time frames. He had right now, but if it was anything before that, it was laster day. Okay, laster day. Well, we didn't get mad at him and just knock him upside of the head and tell him he was stupid. No, you just let him practice the language. Well, you got to practice the language, and you can do this anytime you want. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says, I will pray in the Spirit, and I will pray in my natural language. I will sing in the Spirit. It's a matter of your will. You say, Father, I'm going to do that again. Thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and just take off. Make noise and let the Spirit give you the utterance. One last thing. I'm way, way out of time. 
there's so much that we didn't get to cover in this series, but I believe it's, this is what the Lord wanted me to cover. And we didn't talk about the fruit of the Spirit. We didn't talk about the operations, administrations, and gifts of the Spirit. Those are whole other studies. You can study the Spirit of God from now on and not exhaust it because it is God Himself. But I do want to give you a sneak peek. You edify yourself. You build yourself up on your most holy faith. You make yourself stronger on the inside by praying in the Spirit. You can find that in the book of uh, Jude. And you can find it there in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. They edify themselves when they pray in the Spirit. And one last thing, at the same time you're getting your, making yourself stronger in the Holy Spirit, you can enter into rest. Isaiah chapter 28 says, This is the rest and this is the refreshing that I will give my people with a stammering lips will I speak to them. Study it out. Get the rest, get the refreshing, and don't remember, I mean, don't forget <laughs> that I love you, that God loves you. He's put this in place and given you the Holy Spirit for your success. And Jesus is Lord. Thank you, partners and friends, for helping make these broadcasts possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, be sure to follow us on Instagram, and you can also listen to our broadcast on iTunes. Contact us at davidweeder.org or call us at 1-800-988-5380 to send praise reports, request prayer, or for more information about our ministry and how to become a partner.